when you are asked to create a sound, sometimes it's complete panic because you don't know what to do. So this is a glass flower vase. So you just start recording anything. Who's your friend who likes to play? And so it's sort of a discovery process. In our movies, you know, everything we see on the screen has to be built. Nothing is captured in the lens as you might get in a live action movie. And that is the same story in sound. They start with nothing and they build all these sounds, which is hard enough, I think made a little harder in this movie where we're in the mind and there's no point of reference of how things sound, how characters sound when they sit in a chair in headquarters or how the train of thought should sound as it goes by the window. Even a character pushing a button, we wanted to have a certain sound, like we'd say, like in the mind, but what is that? So they had to kind of pioneer that and find it. What we're doing in the movie is taking a very abstract concept and making it real and literal. Where are we? Long-term memory. Oftentimes, films that I've been a part of, they're more based in reality, so we're using real sounds for the image to make it feel natural so that we accept what's happening. But in this case, it's abstract. You'll hear in this reel some new ideas for the mind world. And one is the sound of crabs in the sand. Whoa. And he's got these two microphones and he's put them in the beach. What sound design is, is a craft that helps the filmmaker realize the story clearly through sound. And our jobs as sound designers are to come up with ideas that can spark an emotional response from the filmmakers. Well, crabs. I thought for the memory dump, this would be cool. Oh, yeah, and cool. also just in the mind world, just, mm -hmm. it's organic, uh -huh. but it's muted. Kind of has that. It's really fun in that way. Because it's animation, because it's abstract, it's a really good opportunity for sound. On first look, it, it seems like a sweet, simple film, but sound-wise, there are all these perspectives. We're going in the outside world, coming back inside the head. Hello. We're looking at things in the outside world while we're inside the head. Riley. Oh, look at you. Aren't you a little bundle of joy? Another perspective is we're capturing memories inside these memory balls. So they're memories from the outside world playing back inside the head, inside a memory ball. Aren't you a little bundle of joy? So it's like layers and layers deep of perspectives. <laughs> sound is one of those weird things that's hard to talk about because it's just sound. It's what does all that mean? In the context of a film, it all has emotional meaning. They've created these fabulous memory balls, and anytime something happens in the movie where it's important, it becomes a memory. Then there's another memory, which is a really intense memory. It's the core memory. The core memories need to stand out from regular memories as being extra important because they are. Like for us, the thing that got you into whatever it is you do, if suddenly you forgot it, that's like a foundational thing. I guess we hope that it's a memorable sound so that when yeah. we hear it again, we go, oh, I know what that is. That's a core memory sound. We needed visually and sound-wise to support that idea. And so that was one of the harder sounds because he wanted it to be unusual playful, it had to work with Michael Giacchino's music, and it had to have some sort of a signature sound so that when we hear it again, later on, we recognize it. I started off getting a violin bow, bowing it on some different glass textures. Then a new sound was introduced, which was this beautiful Japanese prayer bell. And if you wobble it, it kind of makes a warbling sound. What I found was that we had to create this sound against the music.
because whenever the music was playing, depending on where the core memory was happening in the film, there would be a different piece of music in a different key. So we found ourselves pitching directly to whatever the music was. We're making a movie inside the mind of a little girl, and yet it's the most endless place we've ever thought about. It feels very immersive, like the worlds he creates, you feel like you're not just watching it from a distance, you're kind of within it. For instance, in the memory dump scene of the film, somehow our sound team found a way to completely mirror the visuals. A lot of them are kind of bizarre, like memories when they dissipate. You could go, well, based on what I've seen, these are sort of glass-like, and so they should make a sort of shattering noise. Well, that would have uh, affected you emotionally in the wrong way. The sound that these things make when they dissipate is almost like leaves blowing in the wind, and it's a very tingly kind of feel, and, and it, it evokes a feeling of loss. I love this movie. You can tell that it's coming from a place of real experience. Like, you can feel it. Pete's daughter or his family, in the story that's in there, it's a personal story for him. So how can sound help communicate that? That's what's so great about everybody that we worked with. Everyone thinks the way we do, which is, how does this affect me emotionally? It has to make enough logical sense so my brain doesn't reject it, but it has to, more importantly, speak to me emotionally.